Uh, there are people who don't even know what to eat this morning because so once you have life and you have the ability to move about and do things freely, it might not be a very good situation, but at least you should thank God um, for that opportunity to even wake up again. And so it's good to have you join us and we're excited. We're on till 10.30 a.m. There's a lot to discuss on the show today. And so look forward to our this morning conversation. Johnny will come your way also with Johnny's Bites. And then after that, we'll get into the big issue. And today we'll be taking a look at two important topics. One of them we'll be discussing on this morning. And it's the ban on the export of grains in out of the country and that's as a result of the drought that has occurred in about eight regions across the country the northern region being one of the most affected regions i mean two months ago or maybe two a month ago or so we started raising concerns about the issue of drought in the northern region the farmers had started speaking they were worried that the rains were not coming and so that was going to affect the yield of um, their crops and so uh, we were hoping that some intervention will come through i remember the president association uh, president farmers association also had touched on it and they were worried about what could happen to their investment so they had asked government to step in with some interventions. Yesterday, government did step in with some interventions, and one of them is the fact that they're going to ban. In fact, with immediate effect, they have banned the export of crops from now till January 2025, just so we can have enough in the country to feed ourselves. Because if you look at all the regions that have been affected, they all contribute about 62% of the grains that we consume or are produced in this country alone. And so, of course, he's looking within and saying, let's protect ourselves first, let's feed ourselves first before we think of the rest of the world and so i will be speaking about it what do you make of this are you a farmer have you been affected by the droughts well the rains were told have started coming but have you been affected by it and then also we'll be talking about napco about the farm d um student well not students graduates who have been working for a year without their salaries about 320 of them and also youth in afforestation who were told have not received their monies up until now Many, many months of arrears owed. We, we asked the vice president um, what he was planning to do about it. I mean, with regards to NAPCO, he said that it had come to his attention. In fact, he had petitioned the finance ministry to look into it, and he was going to follow up on that. The Farm D students as well. Um, we'll get into that conversation because later this morning, they'll be having a press conference to give us further details on what their next line of action would be if they don't receive their monies, which is very disturbing. And so we'll get into that conversation as well. And Papa Ro, Roland Walker will be coming your way with Community Manifesto from Circle. Yesterday, unfortunately, we could not do um, Community Manifesto. Just when we started, there was chaos in the Dododio constituency. We are the Makola 31st um, market. And unfortunately, when one side was able to, you know, express their views, which was the NDC, they were able to express their views on what they thought um, was happening to the country and, you know, their livelihoods. They just didn't allow the other side, which is one person from the NPP, to share her opinion, and that's erupted in chaos. Very disappointing development there. We could not continue because they just, they just would not um, allow us to do so, and so we had to pack up and leave. Uh, we're hoping that we can have some sanity in the constituency that we'll be visiting today. And this is just a word of caution to all of you out there. You should allow opposing views. That's the whole idea of a democracy. And so if things are not working for you and someone is also criticizing your side for not making things work for them, they are allowed to criticize. That is what a democracy is about. At the end of the day, we're looking for a solution to better our lives. And so yesterday I was disappointed um, you know, in, in that, that, that faction. And I hope that moving forward, we can correct these issues so that hopefully we can go back to this constituency and have a proper conversation about the challenges that they are facing. But it's time now for this morning. All right, so yesterday there was a press conference that was held and it involved the Minister of Agric, the Minister of Finance and the Defence Minister. And they were giving us an update on the effects of the drought in the eight regions across the country and what they intended to do. Yesterday they announced an outright ban on the export of grains. And so let's listen to what the Minister of um, Agric had to say with regards to what their next line of action would be. With immediate effect... Government is placing a ban 
on the export of grains, including maize, rice, soya bean, until the situation normalizes. This measure is essential to ensure the availability of these critical crops on the domestic market. A fall in grain supply, government will tap into the ECOWAS grain reserve and partner with the private sector to bridge the gap. Government will also bring in 300,000 metric tons of maize and 150,000 metric tons of rice to provide food support to vulnerable farmers who have lost their crop and also for the market. You know, I, I don't think uh, that is the way to go. We need to do broader conversation on that. Otherwise, it may backfire. You mean the ban, the ban is not going the to ban, be no, much of a help? Ban, the ban, I think it's too premature to announce a ban. I say this with clear evidence of what that happened to us last two years. The ban rather put farmers more into a risky position than what it intends to do. You see, let's take last year, 2020, we produced so much that we, as an association, approached the government and they demonstrated to help us to mop all what we produce and farmers cannot get market and store them. So that during the late season or emergency season, it will release into the market. Mm. That may never batch. Farmers nearly actually um, committed suicide because they took loans, they have to settle their utility bills, they have to pay for their kids' school fees, and no market for their produce. Right. So we're also fortunate that the Burkina Bay and then the Tukulis came in to mop up. So if government is announcing a ban, what we expect to hear from government what are the measures in place to ensure that there is a guarantee market? To ensure that we have prices that commensurate with increase in cost of production. Mm. But if you just ban and then without putting in those measures, by the end of the day, you are making the farmers to suffer. And when the farmers are not able to get good market to commensurate the loans and the cost of production, the following year they won't go into production again. And that's Dr. Charles Nyaba of the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana. We would like to hear from you. I mean, the fact that they are not in agreement with the ban does not mean they don't agree with everything that the minister announced yesterday. Yesterday it was announced that there was some $500 million that, you know, the Minister of Agri Agric was seeking to fund the crisis. And they were going to, um, you know, transfer and supply food and other relief items to the affected farmers. The Peasant Farmers Association said they liked that idea. In fact, it was one of the things that they listed two weeks ago when they had a press conference. And so they're okay with that. It's just the ban that they seem to have a challenge with. So let's hear from you. What do you make of this decision? Are you on the side of the farmers who think that this ban was really not the right way to go, even though they agree with some of the interventions? Or do you think at this point where the minister says we're in a situational crisis, um, there was a need for that ban so they can address the issue head on. Uh, the numbers are on your screens right now. Please call us. We'd like to hear from you. We have our first caller on the line. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Thank My you for joining us. Is Your name, name is? My name is Shinti from Tema West. All right. Talk to us. Talk yeah. us. Yeah. I think the minister has done well, but it's not everything the minister would do which everybody would like. Yeah. Mm. Think about it. But, you know, in governance, you need to work and work very well for everybody. And I think the policy that's put in up and whatever is, it's okay. Mm. So the farmers should get some, uh, the farmers should get some. I know it's political for them. So part of the uh, do anywhere not to agree. But I shouldn't get bothered. You should go to that uh, mother Ghana and then the crop should go on. And then number two, uh, yesterday about the press conference, the Sunday, the NPP that mm. did, did. I think most of the journalists in the trade, in the media media, especially, you could hear Captain Smart saying they gave 200,000 to the journalists and whatever. Mm, but, but, but that's not, what, also that's money, not what we're discussing, when, when, sir. That's not what we're discussing for this morning. So please, let's stick yeah. to the conversation. I understand that you want to share your opinion on that as well. Yeah. And at the right time, yeah, we'll give you a chance. Mean, but unfortunately, mean, we cannot. Because, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please make your, your comments brief so that we can allow other people to call in as well. This morning, we're asking about the ban, the outright ban on the export of grains. Um, and this was initiated by the Minister of Agri yesterday so we can have enough food, enough buffer in the country to feed ourselves, especially after the drought in the eight regions. And 
So that's what we're discussing. You can also call in as well. Uh, the numbers are on your screen. Let us know what you think about this. Now, I, I have Sh I have Shali from Wale Wale. Hello, good morning. Good morning, madam. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? Thank you. All right. Tell me, what's, the, what's yeah. the real situation on the ground? You're calling from Wale Wale. I'd like to know. Yes. Wale Wale. Okay. Talk okay. to me. I, you're asking of what? What should I say? So I'm asking you that what is the situation on the ground for farmers, especially in the northern regions? In fact, it's very, it's very pathetic. Very, very pathetic. If you look at how the farms have been ravaged by the drought, uh, I'm, I'm very afraid that this year the farming, in fact, is, is, is going to be very, very high. Mm. And cost of food will also be escal escalated because all the farms have been destroyed. Mm. And listening to the measures that the ministers, minister put in place yesterday, for me, uh, it doesn't commensurate with what is really on the ground. Because if you are giving thousand cities per hectare, do you understand, per hectare, and when they were doing the farming, I myself, I farm. It cost us about 3,000 Ghana cities. Hmm. In fact, to farm, to plow, to, to buy the inputs, the fertilizer, the NPK, and the ammonia, the condemn, the insecticide, the weed side. In fact, it costs a lot, more than 3,000 Ghana cities per hectare. Hmm. Per hectare. So we are giving 1,000 Ghana cities. So it means that it doesn't commensurate. It doesn't commensurate. And my worry is that these things, that this support that they are also going to give, will end up in the executives of the of the MPP and the DCEs because that's what they have been doing, not only in Wariwari but across the country. Whenever there is a relief item that is supposed to go to the right people, they will corner it. They will squander the money. They will divert the fertilizer. They will divert the money to their farms, leaving the. Uh, the affected farmers. So me, that is that is my, my worry. That is okay. my worry. But in terms of the ravage and the destructions of the farms, in fact, it's very very pathetic. It's mm. very very pathetic. Thank All you right. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm so sorry that this is happening to our farmers as well who have invested so much money um, into their yield and unfortunately may not be able to recoup that. At least we're hoping that we can get the full amount, the $500 million that government is saying they're going to find in order to, you know, manage the crisis at the moment. What do you also think, especially if you're in any of these affected regions, what's the real situation on the ground? Are you a farmer? Are you affected by this as well? We'd love to hear from you. And um, while we do so, I'd like to also go on Facebook and see what people are saying on there as well. And so you can send us a message um, on our TV3 page on Facebook. But I think Johnny's ready now. We'll continue this conversation on the big issue. So stay with us. We'll be right back.